Hello, everybody. Uh, nice to meet you all. <laughs> uh, so I'm Benjamin Delpy. I'm a French guy. I'm a little bit shy, and my English is not perfect at, at all. So excuse me in advance. Okay. Uh, so I'm the author of Mimikat. Maybe you know it. Maybe you have been pawned by it. I'm so if I'm sorry in advance. Uh, I also wrote uh, a tool named Kikio. I will present it just after. Okay. Uh, I'm not really a secure researcher by day. It's my uh, hobby. It's my, uh, I'm, I'm like Batman. I code by night, OK? <laughs> so I'm not uh, used to this exercise, but I will try. Okay. I, I will try to not use the cyber world. Of, and because of today, I will try to not use the graph world, too. So when I come to Microsoft, I'm not alone, because there is also fun, fun guys to blue hat at Seattle. Uh, this is Clip Dequall and Chris Campbell. This is a uh, former, uh, former researcher about single sign-on on Windows. Okay? And yes, we wear a t-shirt about Mark Rusinovich. I'm, I'm so glad he was here yesterday. So, okay. And I will try something. Because, yeah, because Monday, some, some guy here in the room uh, spoke about a t-shirt. And at the end of the, his presentation, he had a t-shirt from Microsoft. So I won. Uh, um, an Xbox from Microsoft about when there, is, there was an Ask Pazurash contest uh, at Seattle. But unfortunately from, for Microsoft, I'm French. So I was not able to get the Xbox because it was reserved for the US guy. So if someone gets a t-shirt uh, Monday, maybe I will have an Xbox, an Xbox at the end of the talk. For the moment, French queue is sad. Sorry. But OK. Let's go technical. I will try to make some play school level about how Windows work for authentication. Some, maybe some people here remember about Windows XP box to log on. Maybe some people here remember about Windows 8. Windows 8, yes, it exists. Uh, but, so you, t you type your password in a box. Windows authenticates you against, against the Active Directory when you are in the domain or against the same database when it's local. And just after, like in a browser, there is some kind of cookies that will be used to authenticate against remote research. By default, of course, it's Kerberos in domain, but you can use MSV10 when you do NTLM, and there is some other nasty provider in memory. It's a challenge response. It's a little bit magic. OK. But go back. There is Windows XP is, is new. Let's go back at the beginning. Windows 2000. Yes, Kerberos was here. Yes, NTLM was here. Yes, password was here. Of course, smart card was here too, but password was here. It was very good. It was a very good way to get password in memory because Windows 2000 keep your password in memory for Kerberos stuff sometimes, but of course it's secure. It's XOR encrypted with a one-byte key. So at this time, I didn't find any tools that dump the key to make some e password extraction. Because of the one byte key, all tools I've saw make brute force on it, because it was enough. <laughs> but it was all day. It was very old, so because of that, it's not in Mimikatz. It's in another tool that I provide. It's called Mimilove, because I love you, OK? I'm French. I'm a romantic guy. <laughs> okay. Then it was Windows XP. Windows XP introduced WDGest provider. It's a nice gift from Microsoft. Because WDGest keeps your password in memory by default in all way. Oh, shit. It's not good at all. So of course, at Microsoft, they think, oh, OK, a, a one byte key is not enough. We will have more longer key. And we will use RC4 or a DSX encryption. But as it, it's a little bit, it's play school crypto, too. We will store the key just near the encrypted password. In fact, it's exactly in the same process. It's in LSISS process. So if you are able to access the LSS process to the encrypted data, you're also able to access the key needed to decrypt the data. Nice move, Microsoft. At the end of Windows XP, there are also another provider, which is called TSPKG, which was introduced for make terminal server single sign-on. It's not enabled by default, but sometimes uh, you can enable. Of course, this is the first version that I support to dump a lot of passwords on also Kerberos TKK. Let's move on. 
Windows Vista and Windows 7. Oh, new gift from Microsoft. So this time, by default, there is the TSPKG package. It's needed to make uh, cred ECSP, so terminal server single sign-on on, on uh, some other credential delegation on the network. It's too bad because not a, not a lot of sysadmin use this terminal server uh, single sign-on. It's a quick win for them, but it's a quick win for us too. And I never see in use in real life, but there is also the live ECSP provider. It's for, it's for people that use their live account to log on on Windows. Wow, <laughs> why not? So these times, more passwords, someone at Microsoft say, hey, we, we must go deeper in security. So they just change the algorithm to encrypt password. They move to triple death on AES, but again, it's in the same process area. So you can dump it and you can have password in clear text. Okay. Windows 8, oh, my favorite Windows version. Yes, you can read it, of course. So yes, Microsoft introduced new way to authenticate on Windows. My favorite one is picture password. Yeah, you move, you draw a circle on the screen, you uh, make points, aligned. It's very good because you can see some trace on the screen, so it's very easy to act. But Microsoft invented at this time biometrics. By default, we thought, uh, we thought Lenovo stuff, we thought uh, another third party stuff. It was very cool at the beginning but it leads to your password in clear text in a vault. It's not what I call biometrics because offline access to this password is possible. So if you use bi biometrics under Windows 8, your password is known by maybe everyone. I don't know. On, there is also a pin code, but it is one, two, three, four, of course, clear text password in memory. Again, it's Windows 8. It's not the same case with Windows 10. I don't have 12 all times. Microsoft introduced also, by default at the beginning, pass the hash and pass the ticket to remote desktop. It was very cool because sometimes you are only able to dump NTLM hash or Kerberos ticket from memory. There is not always password in memory. With that, you were able to log on on a real desktop only with an, an NTLM hash. It was magic. So yes. It was, it was the end of very bad stuff in Windows for authentication. Windows 8.1 introduced new stuff, but of course there is some legacy nasty stuff in memory. So by default with Windows 8.1, WDGS provider still exists, but it's not enabled by default. So no clear text password. Kerberos provider can store the password sometimes, but just after the authentication, it will sometimes remove it. There is a garbage collector in the LSA no, that will clean all session data from memory sometimes to erase some NTLM hash on Kerberos tickets. Microsoft introduced restricted admin mode. This is exactly what I use to make pass the hash on a remote desktop. They introduced LSA protection. Wow, LSA protection, yes. By default, when Mimikas, I want to a dumb password, access denied. Oh, fuck, I'm admin. I don't need to have access denied. Yes, but the LSA protection is only a flag in the kernel structure of the process. Mimikas has a driver, so I uh, load it in the kernel. I flip the bit, and it, it, it works, of course. They introduce protected user security group. It's very good because it, it stops some legacy nasty stuff, but Kerberos, even if, if they are, uh, Kerberos tickets, even shorter, are still exportable. So yes. Just after that, Microsoft published uh, a kind of hotfix to stop uh, the restricted admin, bo uh, restricted admin mode by default because pass the hash and pass the ticket or overpass the hash. But, Thank you, Microsoft, because it was one of the first time I saw Microsoft team backport some cool stuff in security in older Windows version. This is, not a, this is new to start menu. This, this was very, it was by default in Windows 7, you can't disable WDGest. In Windows 7, some, it will erase more often the password in memory. So thank you, Microsoft, it was cool. Thank you, Microsoft technical teams, it was cool. But management was here. Marketing was here. So some, some people at Microsoft have a very 
genius idea, say, hey, we will sell these backports as we fix past the hash. Very well, good move. <laughs> but past the hash is, is, is that exactly the NTLM protocol. So if you fix past the hash, you stop NTLM authentication. So no, it was not possible. Talbery was here, too. <laughs> and he noticed that, uh, come on, Microsoft, you must change the title. Yes, they changed the title. OK, previously, this KB is about we fix past the hash. And just a few days after, a few weeks, I didn't remember exactly. Oh, yeah, I have no, uh, no day. You were at Microsoft? At this time? It was not. <laughs> at this time. <laughs> it was a troll at this time. <laughs> so, yes, they changed the title. And because I am French, in France, they didn't change the title for months. <laughs> so, it was fixed the puzzle H2 for months. It was a very good uh, moment to troll Microsoft. Okay, Windows 10. Very good version. Even at the beginning, it was very, it was very good. Microsoft introduced some virtualization thing to the, to the client. Of course, only for the rich people. Windows 10 Enterprise, of course. Normal users are not protected. You can, uh, they have Cortana, they have biometry. It's cool for them. But for some uh, rich enterprise, they can have VSM enabled. VSM enabled is like for people that uh, make some crypto stuff in real life, it's like an HSM, a software HSM. You can ask result about cryptographic operation, but you, can, you can't ask keys. It's cool. But because it's, it's crypto, I make some slide about credential guard without bullshit. It's not a troll. It's cool. <laughs> I will make it with NTLM because it's more easy to understand than Kerberos, but it's exactly the same idea. For exa example, when you log on on Windows 10 Enterprise with credential guard enabled, you have, you, you have the NTLM hash, which is derived from the password in your memory. You will send it to the secure world. Whoops, the NTLM hash is here. It will encrypt it with a session key from this virtual machine. It will give you a blob, a blue blob, like blue hat. The blob is coming back to the normal world. But when you, when, when you will have to authenticate against a server with NTLM challenge, you will send back the blob to the secure world with the NTLM challenge. And this, the crypto operation will be in the secure world, not in, use, in the Windows normal user mode. It will decrypt the blob. You, it will have the NTLM hash, the NTLM challenge. It will calcul calculate the response, and you will have the response back to the normal mode. At no times, so you will have access to the key. Just at the beginning, of course, because you typed your password. It's exactly the same for Kerberos but there is more key for Kerberos. Okay, so Windows 10 is cool for, the, for this moment because it, uh, this, this slide is maybe old, so I, just, I removed some bad, uh, bad points that Microsoft has made because Microsoft makes some evolution on it. So you need Windows 10 Enterprise for which, of course. At this time, I have seen some, uh, some screenshots with local users. So you can protect local users, not only domain, uh, domain users. You need secure boot virtualization. For the moment, you don't need TPM for this stuff because this is only a session key. When you reboot, the, the, the credential will not survive. I don't see protection for TG, TGS session key for the moment. Maybe, uh, maybe it exists, but I don't see it for the, for the moment. So you, you can stall Kerberos ticket for, uh, for TGS. It will work, so no TGT. It's not really variable in the real world in virtual machine because uh, it's, it's like inception, virtualization in virtualization in virtualization. Uh, it will not work all times. Of course, in Hyper-V it can work, but uh, who is Hyper-V? It's not enabled by default, so you, you, can't, you can't rely on it uh, on all times. And I've seen some video from Intel that there is some physical attack because you can reprogram some firmware on the, on the motherboard to access raw memory uh, of, the, uh, of the computer. With raw memory, of course, you can access the key of the, of the secure world. It's good, Microsoft. Thank you very much for that. And I, and I think there will, be, there will be adoption in next year. And this, not, this is not all. There is a lot of potential. Maybe you have heard about remote credential guard. So even if you log on on the terminal server with your credential, your credential will not be deported to the remote uh, server. It will make a tunnel uh, to, to your computer to make crypto operation. It's good. For the moment, it's, I think it's only for Kerberos, but maybe NTLM will arrive. 
But please, Microsoft, protect pin code, of course, because pin code, smart card pin code are in memory. It's on rules. Protect DPIP stuff, protect private key of users. There is a lot of stuff to protect with this new uh, potential, uh, uh, it's like Docker, it's, it's new secure world. Protect the same database, even on the domain controller, because there is sensitive operation. And please, Microsoft, with this technology, protect the Kirby TGT key, because some bad people here will stole it. So Microsoft make a lot of good stuff. It annoys me sometimes because my tools still works on normal times, but sometimes it blocks me. So I, I had to look on other stuff. And I had to look on protocol. I hate that because I must read documentation. Uh, but Microsoft has a lot of documentation about their protocol with sexy name inside. Because when I see a protocol with backup key inside, mm, it looks sexy. When I see directory replication service protocol, wow. I will make something with that. <laughs> Even older protocol, NRPC, NetLogon, NetLogon, woo, it's very, very old. Even that, it exists in Windows 2016. So there is also some documentation. An attacker rely on documentation on more and more on logical attacks because zero day are expensive. So Kaspersky, sorry, I wasn't aware that Kaspersky uh, will be here to, for the talk. So bad example, but uh, Kaspersky was attacked by a, by a pa Ma Microsoft pack signature attack, in fact. So uh, Microsoft fixed something in Kerberos provider. It was very old, but they forgot to, f to, uh, to make the change in the, in the KDC implementation. This is, not a, this is not buffer overflow. This is not stuff uh, rope like that. It was just a logical error. They use a logical error in Kerberos to implement user to domain. So, no. You can, you, it's more difficult to extract clear text passwords, but you can rely on other kind of attack, like golden tickets. Sorry, your, your sticker was better than mine. So. <laughs> you can rely on silver tickets. It looks like mo uh, less rich, of course, but it's very, very powerful, and it's not very, very well detected. So use silver tickets also. And DPAPI backup key. DPAPI backup key is very cool. When you store your password in Chrome, when you store your password in Credential Manager, in, uh, in Edge, in what you want, when you use a certificate, private key, uh, remote access resource, RDP password, when you use all day, when you store it on the computer, it's protected by, by DPAPI. On domain, all master key needed to decrypt your secret, all these keys are protected by one single key. This key is on all domain controller and is never renewed. You remember maybe the backup key protocol? Yes, this is this one. So with some nasty tool, like Mimikatz, for example, you can ask ni nicely the domain controller, please send me the backup key of the domain. And you will be able to decrypt password for all users in the domain. Even passwords for future users, even future secrets. This case never change, and if it change, you will have problems. It's more and more problematic that rolling the Kirby TGT key. So please, don't roll it. Be nice with me. Of course, there is also other method, like skeleton key. Nice method, Secu Dell SecureWorks, I expose it in a paper, that people patch the domain controller for you to let people authenticate against domain controller with a golden password. So your normal password still works, you don't, you don't notice anything, but I can use the Mimikatz password to log on on your own account. It will work. It's cool. You can also manipulate your SID to make uh, do, uh, domain to forest escalation, but you can manipulate your SID to become a domain controller. If you, if you put the SID of the domain controller in your user, you are seen by the domain like a domain controller. And you're even not a member of the domain controller group. With this SID on your user, you, can, you, you will be able to make some synchronization. Synchronization is this is sync. I, I've seen the verbs about this is, I have this is thinking, so some stuff, <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> so this is sync is not only by, by myself. Uh, it's also by another French guy, Vincent Letou, which is a very smart guy. He, he discovered that Microsoft pushed to uh, other clients uh, tools to synchronize their Active Directory 
to Azure. It's cool. But all Azure will be aware of your password. Magic. This tool from Microsoft synchronizes the directory to Azure, even your NTLM hash. So if a tool by Microsoft can make that, I will do that. I was not alone to make that. So with also guys, Alberto Sorino from Impacket, also very smart guy that make it in Python because C is not all, uh, the only language, and even in PowerShell. So this is think is magic. I love it. With this sync, you can ask Mimikatz on your computer to synchronize NTLM hash, IES key, even clear text password if they have the, the, um, the, the flag on their accounts who have rem, um, reverse encryption. You can ask the, DC, the main controller to send you this data. There is no file on disk of the domain controller. There is no shell code. There is no access to the, to the domain controller. You only need admin write or domain controller write. And if you use domain controller write, there is no log. Because domain controller are synch uh, make synchronization all times, of course. So if there is one log each time they synchronize, you will have problems. So it's only by protocol. This is the MSDRSR protocol. There is, this is only documented. You just make this call, bind domain controller info to get some GUID, quite name to have the GUID of the user. You bind, you, you ask for the change to the domain controller, and the domain controller will send you nicely all the data that you want. It can be NTLMH, IESH, it can be the backup key, it can be the, the picture of, of, the, of the user. It will send you. On the, it's on a normal protocol, it's not LDAP. Okay. So it's magic, so I, 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 will make, I will try to make a demonstration about DC Sync. So maybe they will go back. No? Demonstration? My screen? My Microsoft? Hello? <laughs> Thank you. I'm a secure guy. I use smart card. You will see. Sometimes it works, sometimes it fails. So of course, Mimikatz and Kikio are post-exploitation to, tools. So here, I log as, uh, like a, as a domain admin. I'm secure. I use smart card. Okay. So this is Mimikatz. Not version. So what I do? Oh, uh, is it enough? Yes, it's enough. Okay. It's very fast, it's very efficient, and the domain controller sends you all the data that you want. This is a Kirby TGT account, the most dangerous account on the network. Never change it, of course. And you will have the NTLM hash, you will have the AES hash, because some tools uh, rely on RC4 encryption to detect you. So please use AES key. And sometimes, if you are lucky, if, they have, if, if some uh, nasty domain administrator have enabled reverse uh, encryption on password, you will have the clear text credential of normal user. So here it's a Kirby TGT, so there is no password. But if, if I want the administrator, administrator in French, the administrator uh, NTLM hash, romantic, isn't it? It's exactly the same. So you will have its hash, you will have AES key. And because it's a lab, there is not a lot, but if you have, if, if you have enable uh, history of the NTLM hash, we'll have all the NTLM history, of course. All of that is made remotely, just for the magic. I can even ask my, uh, my own hash. Mm. 
and that's all. This is was the only request. I ask for change. The DC sent me the change. I have all all data. No file send to the domain controller. No no alteration of the domain. So please use it. Okay, let's go back to the presentation. Well, thank you. But Microsoft ATA team was here. Thank you. So at this time, they detect this thing. They are not the, uh, the, the only one company to make that. So, okay, Microsoft detects my MS DRSSS protocol. That's cool. I will use another older one. NetLogon, NRPC. NRPC is older. It was uh, at the age of NTLM authentication. This protocol, I will not make a demonstration, it's more technical, but with this protocol, you can ask a domain, when you have the domain controller right, you can ask another domain controller to send you all NTLM hash all of computer accounts, server accounts, and domain controller accounts. And what the fuck, it's only computer, what you can do with that? You can do silver tickets, very important. But even, even with that, if you have the right to flip some flag in the user account, you can make a normal user account a workstation account, and it will send you the NTLM hash of the users. At this time, I don't think it's detected by tools. I think it will be in the future because it's very easy to trap. Now, let's go to KKO. This meme is only for French people. You can't understand. <laughs> so, KKO is another tool that I made. It's external to Mimikatz for, both, for two main reasons. First reason, it's, it relies on a lot of WinSock call. I hate to, uh, to, uh, to code on network stuff. Oh. It relies also on an external library to deal with ISN1 in C language. ISN1 is a L, oh. especially in C. Memory corruption, la 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 la. Okay. So I ask uh, the company OSS uh, Nokalva to uh, send me uh, a license nicely, try a license, and they offer me a license for one year, and they, they even let me uh, offer you Kikio um, tools with uh, their library inside. They are very nice. I think, because this is not very public on the sites, Microsoft is one client of this company too, so we use the same library. It can help sometimes when you make some memory stuff. So in Kikio, there is a lot of tools at this time to make some exploit on domain controller. MS1468 MS uh, uh, is the one that makes uh, Kaspersky mad, okay? But it's more recent than older, uh, older exploits, so, so it, it exists in real life. It will, it will make you normal user to domain admin, so enterprise admin, so forest admin, in one click. Rely on it. Ask TGT is one client, ask TGS is to ask TGS, Aurato password, is to, uh, is to change the password of the users only from its hatch. I, yes, I insist on the term change, not reset. Curbicator is just a co converter from a ticket from a Unix, Mac, blah, 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 to Windows and vice versa. Pekinit Mustiness is the tool that I will present just after. I will uh, let you uh, discover Capstorm by yourself. Do not run, in, uh, run it in a lab, please. The storm is not for nothing. <laughs> okay, so just a little reminder about Kerberos. Kerberos is complicated. <laughs> you will ask the KDC uh, a TGT. It will send you if you have the good password. And when you want to access a share, uh, a website, or like what you want, you will ask the server again to give you the TGS. And after that, you will send the TGS to the resource. It's magic. How do you authenticate with Kerberos? It's very simple with a password. You encrypt a timestamp with your NTLM hash, your AES key, what you want, and you send it to the domain controller in the request. The, re the domain controller, it has your hash, so you can decrypt normally your, uh, the timestamp. It will check it's not, uh, it's, it's more or less the same time, five minutes uh, delay. And, we, and if it's correct, it will encrypt uh, a, t a TGT a session key on the TGT and it will send it to you. It's cool, it's the normal protocol, it's the MIT, uh, it's very old. But what about smart card on token? This is, not, this is not for nothing, you have a smart card here. So sorry, it will be technical. When you use 
password with Kerberos, so you encrypt the timestamp with your password. Maybe you see it's a timestamp. You encrypt it, you will send it to the domain controller with the encrypted timestamp. It will decrypt it and in returns because uh, the KDC loves you too. It will send you your TGT on the session key. The session key is encrypted by your password and TLMH as you want. So you need your password in the, as the answer to, uh, to be able to use the TGT. What about smart cards? There is no password when you use smart card. Yes. But you have private key and public key. Woo. Let's make crypto. So you have a timestamp when you use a smart card, like here. You make a digital signature of the timestamp with your private key, of course. And you will embed your public key in the request to the domain controller. The domain controller it makes it jo its job, it verifies revocation, it verifies uh, it's really you, it verifies groups, blah, 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 blah. And in GIFT, it will give you the TGT and an encrypted session key. The encrypted session key is encrypted by the public key. And on your side, to be able to use this, this key, you need your private key to decrypt. It's normal, it's not magic, it's crypto. But there is another mode, Diffy Elman. I don't know very well how Diffie Man works. When you go to Wikipedia about it, there is, a, there is a, some stuff with blue colors, blah, blah, blah. Ooh. I don't understand, so I, I put a magician. Okay? So at the beginning, it's, it, it's exactly the same. You will sign a timestamp with your private key, but you will embed some Diffie Man parameters in the request. It's, it's, like, it's more or less a session key. You will send it to the domain controller. The domain controller makes exactly the same that previously. It will check it's really you, revocation, blah, blah, blah. But at the end, it will encrypt your session key with the Diffie Hellman stuff. On your side, when you have the answer, you decrypt the session key with the Diffie Hellman uh, magic key you have, and you have your session key, and you are able to use the TGT. What is the problem? For me, no problem. It's cool. But for you, it's a problem. Because when you use password, you need your password to decrypt the IS web from the KDC. When you use RSA encryption, you need your private key to decrypt the answer of the, uh, of the DC. But when you use RSA with Diffielman, you don't need the secret. You see what I, uh, what I want to do with that? When you have access even for f few minutes to a smart card, hey, use my smart card five minutes, but give me back just after. Or if you use Mimikatz to capture pin code of smart card, and you inject in LSISS and you can drive uh, remotely all smart card of all users of terminal server, by example, you will be able to create pressing head timestamp in future. It's time for demonstration. So God of the demo, please. God, ah, God of the demo. So here, it might is, is a, it is a computer joined to, the, to a domain. Of course, I'm a, I'm logged as an admin. It, it's not good, but it works. Just to show you, when you use Mimikatz as administrator, of course. No question, no question, no question. Yes. So I log on with a smart card. Some people here know why there is an NTLM hash in memory, but it's not the, the subject. And here is the pin code of my smart card. Because uh, I'm a lazy guy, I don't use a number for pin code. I use WASA, it's cool. Okay? So it's very easy to have, uh, even in Windows 10. So you can easy, I have a smart card, I have the pin code. You know I am able to use the smart card. Okay? And now, let's go technical. Perfect. So, blah, 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 blah. I will not start for shark. I'm a rebel. So it's very long command line, so I'm lazy. So PK init must I, uh, I will change uh, the command line and I will try to make some documentation. Yes. <laughs> but I want, to, uh, I want to make a request for user admin on the domain lab.local. And subject is admin too. Subject is the subject of the certificate. So yes, it's the same. It's not uh, very efficient, but it's, 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 it's okay. And I will use Diffielman 
on that. I can, I can add a nonce if I want, but it's not necessary. It has my pin code. And I, and I signed a request at the normal time, so there is not a real interest to make that, okay? Let's imagine another one. Another command line, blah, 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 the same. I will start in seven minutes in future. Seven is important because there is a five minute tolerance, so it let me two minutes to copy file. Uh, I will make five, five uh, requ requests uh, and it will, uh, the time increment will be 10 minutes between tickets. And of course I can push the pin code in command line. It's very useful when you have a meta-preter shell. So my uh, smart card we use. So it, it, when you, if, if you want to sign one million uh, requests, the smart card will be very hot, it can fail. So avoid it, be efficient. So now on my desktop, oops, too many files, sorry. Again, don't be so hot. Okay. So now I have to get on my desktop. Yep. I will take the, the two first, it's enough. And I can go on another machine, I will remove the smart card. I don't need it anymore, go out. On this computer, this virtual machine, hack machine, oh, it's a bad machine. This, this machine is not domain joined, it's externally. It's just on connected to the same network. The smart card, this one, is in my hand, I don't need it. And it's not a TGT, there, is, there was not interaction. This is only uh, nice and one seconds of a request to the domain controller. So with that, I will ask a TGT. I will try this one. Good or not good, I don't know. Yes, on, on this example, I used a nice way which is in future, but it's too far away. So the DC refused me, say, hey, you say to me your time is 11.46. Uh, on my side, I'm 11 and half. It's not possible, you can't authenticate like this. So I will use the second one. There is a time in the, in the file name, so you can, uh, of course, uh, guess which is, a, which is a good. Or you can make an algorithm, or, or I can make an algorithm, of course, but I'm lazy. So this time it failed again, but it was voluntary. I wanted to show you the skew, Kerberos error skew. This time the Kerberos uh, time is 11, uh, 11 and a half, of course, or 11 and 31, and the authenticator is 11 and 36. Oh, but there is few seconds in advance, so the DC refuse. I will make exactly the same, and I have a TGT. It's magic, so I have a TGT on my disk, but I prefer to inject it, so pass the ticket, blah, blah, blah. And now, I'm able to go to the DC. It works. <laughs> and of course, the smart card is not in my, is in my own, not in the smart card reader. On the event log of the domain controller, it's seen exactly like, like I've used this smart card. So if you sing uh, IS work in two months, three months in advance, it will work same, as long as the certificate is valid, of course. But certificates are valid at least one year, so you have time. <laughs> and if you are very, if you calculate a lot, a Kerberos, a TGT, like, uh, like the, the one that I have, is valid 10 hours, so you don't need to make a lot. And you can renew it by default for seven days. So you, you only need uh, 52 uh, tickets for one year. 52 ice break for one year, if you are very good. Okay? I will close my session, reopen it, just to flush all cache, because sometimes there is error on the Microsoft garbage collector, not on my uh, slide. Up. So let's go back to the slide, please. Thank you. So is this a Windows problem? No, it's not. It's a Kerberos problem, it is, it is in the RFC. If you want to implement PKINIT, 
it's for smart card logon, in fact, or certificate logon, you must implement DFLMAN. So <laughs> if you want to remove it, you will have problems. And in fact, if you have elliptic curve certificate, this is the only way to authenticate. So no, you can't disable DFLMAN. Deal with it. And what we can do, me nothing, but I'm not the guy that discovers uh, the problems. Microsoft discovers the problems. They, uh, they, they, proposed, uh, they, they, uh, they had proposed a draft, uh, an RFC draft, to, to improve the authentication, to rely on, a, on a, another authenticator. So it will ask another exchange with the client to prove that he, the, um, the client has access to the private key for real. This is not uh, just uh, pre-generated. But because, it was, because the, the previous way with Diffelman was in RFC, there is a problem. To implement the new way, there is a GPO on Windows 10 and Windows 2016, you must have a full network of Windows 10 and Windows 2016. Well, okay. So we all know that we, it will not exist for years. But on the defense side, because I'm not a bad guy, it's very easy to trap. Because by default, when you use smart card with RSA certificate, there is no reason at all that, we, that you will use DFLMAN parameters. And this is not encrypted when you make an RS rec. It's synced. So an EPS, a, ne a network APS, will be able, if they, if they have rule, of course, to see, hey, this guy wants to make DFLMAN. This is strange. We don't need DFLMAN, in fact. So you can trap some guys with that. If there is some crypto guys in the room, on a Microsoft guy in the room, there is a bonus question for you. You will have stickers if you have the, the answer. So please, uh, the review board is not allowed to answer, of course. So why I must do that in my code? It, may, it made me strange nice to make, uh, just to know I have to, I have to do that to make some, my code works. So it's a game. We will do that. So now, because I have three minutes, it, well, it's cool. I will try to make some bonus demonstration, but it's difficult in the normal time. If you have a PKI inside your network to authenticate with smart card, especially Windows 1 with software key, you are in a big ship. Because, of course, Mimikatz is able to export your certificate authority. But even if you use an HSM, hardware security module, that will, of course, uh, uh, deny me the, the right to export the private key. Otherwise, I will be wish if I do that, even on smart card. You can ask an HSM to make some operation for you. So I will try to make a very short demonstration on it. But just imagine the scenario, in case of my uh, demonstration will not uh, work. Imagine the scenario I will have access to the PKE server, and I will ask the HSM or the software key to generate a raw certificate for me, by example, for three years, four years, without, without CRL distribution point inside. If I use the crypto API to ask this certificate, the PKI API of Microsoft is not aware that I have asked a certificate. So you can't revoke this certificate. I will have a certificate valid for three years, four years, what I want, for any user I want, and you will not be able to revoke it. So if I'm lucky, I will try to make one, this kind of certificate to show you. So, up. Uh -huh. Thank you. So this is another smart card. This is a blank smart card with a sticker on it. Mm -hmm. So because I have no time, you will pardon me, but I will make the operation directly on the domain controller. Or not, or I don't know. No, I will make it. I like to live dangerously. Up. No, 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 not this one. Up. Blah, blah, blah. Just to simulate the insertion from Windows point of view. So yes, it's an empty smart card. There is no certificate on it, no key on it, okay? So I will just use, I will connect to the domain controller because I have NTLMH, password, blah, blah, blah. At this time, I log with, with the password, but I will show you just after. No, oh, 
Oh. Mm -hmm. Yes, you're right, thank you. Stress. Someone said it's the wrong password. It was dangerous. So I am on the domain controller here. I will just show you the, the domain, the operation. I have my help file, of course. La la la. Up. On here, I will ask the crypto API, by a lot of C function, uh, of course, to generate me a certificate for the administrator username, but I can make what I want inside directly on the smart card. There, is, there will be no file on the disk. Go out of the demo. Woo. I generate private key on the card. La, la, la. Yes. And I, will, uh, and I import the certificate on my smart card. That's all. And in the Windows PKI point of view, I never generated a certificate for administrator. It's, it's the admin, not administrator. The username administrator, it doesn't have any certificate from Windows point of view. I remove the smart card, I reinsert the smart card. Let's propagate, blah, blah, blah. And this time, I have administrator certificates propagated from KiwiLab uh, Authority. This is a strange certificate I generated just, uh, oh, maybe from yesterday, I don't know. Yes, ta, 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 ta. And there is no CRL distribution point, so you can't revoke it. And with this smart card, you can make a com from command line, but it's very sexy to make it RDP. Go out of the demo. Oh no, I log. Thank you. Just go back. Thank you. And of course, I can use it with Kikio because if I can export the certificate authority, I can generate on the fly certificate for user I want to impersonate. It will be invisible from the Windows point of view. So thank you for your attention.